Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Petrie for his question. I'm sure he would agree that uh, the way I'd like to respond draws on a fairly um, unfamiliar source uh, for this side of the House. But I agree with Paul Keating, Mr. Speaker, because he said today that higher taxes for higher spending is not a plan for jobs for growth. What he said today is the big falls in commodity prices mean Australia's income has been cut. We cannot pretend we can go on spending as though nothing has happened. Those opposite may think that, but this is what Paul Keating said. The world has trimmed us down. We now Sydney have to trim ourselves warned, down, trim our spending and not accommodate more of it by ever more taxation. He says the aim of policy should be make the private sector larger. He's right. Member that is the Wakefield aim of our policy, warned. Mr Speaker, not to restrain it with a burgeoning public sector, Mr Speaker. Now, that's what that's what this government is doing, Mr Speaker. That is our plan. We are interested in things that will actually ultimately see taxes fall in this country, not see taxes ever higher to chase ever higher levels of spending, which it never can catch, and as a result you borrow more and more and more. And that's why the government has credible measures in place to reduce spending, to reduce government spending as a share of the economy in this country, down from 25.9 per cent this year down to 25.3 per cent at the end of the forward estimates. Now, this was reinforced in our mid-year statement, and that mid-year statement was well received by the rating agencies. And Moody said, notwithstanding the fiscal challenges ahead, we expect the government's fiscal position to remain within a range consistent with its AAA rating. They said the MIEFO incorporates a realistic view of the fiscal implications of lower growth. The government's commitment to fiscal consolidation is evident in the projecting narrowing in the fiscal deficits. The policy's focus on improving the government's fiscal position supports the sovereign's credit profile. Now, Mr Speaker, that's our plan. That's what we're doing. We are reducing the share of government as a share of the economy so we can let the private sector expand and continue the strong job creeps that we've seen. 300,000 and more jobs last year, Mr Speaker. 300,000 and more. What we have is job-intensive economic growth in this country. For every inch of growth we are achieving in these difficult circumstances, there more, there's more jobs in every single inch of that growth. Now, those opposite, Mr Speaker, have a very different point of view. What they are saying is, of all the big savings measures, because they call tax increases savings, Mr Speaker, that's what they do, and what they've said is they've come up with $7.6 million in higher taxes but that doesn't even get them to the point of the more than $13 billion, almost $14 billion, in the new spending they've announced just since the budget, Mr Speaker. On top of that, some $30 billion in savings that we've put in place that they want to put spending back on the agenda, and almost $13 billion the in measures they continue resume, to block. Treasurer will resume his seat.